everything takes time. Physical processes do, computation does, humans do. So the measurement of time ends up being a central need in physical computing. We'll look now a little at the Arduino timing system. The Arduino doesn't have a real-time clock in the sense of a wall clock that measures hours and minutes. Instead, it has some hardware counters that measure elapsed time for when it turned on. So it's good at making relative time measurements, but doesn't know the absolute time or the calendar time. The clock hardware is driven by the system clock. There's a 16 megahertz crystal driving the Arduino itself. So the actual time resolution can be on the order of microseconds or tens of microseconds. With some software, the upper limit can be arbitrarily large. Even if the physical hardware rolls over with clever software, you can keep track of that and measure arbitrarily long intervals as long as the chip can run. So the, a lot of the beginner code that we've seen uses uh, delay statements as a way of regulating the flow of time by simply capturing execution for some interval. There's also a delay microseconds, which can do that to somewhat higher precision. But one question to ask is, what is happening during that delay? And the answer is really nothing. While the Arduino is in the delay statement, it's waiting for the hardware clock to roll over some amount and then doesn't do anything useful. It just sits there in a tight loop. And so no other calculations can be performed. We'll see in the end that this is a somewhat limiting structure for the program because very much we'd like the, the system to be doing other useful things while it's waiting. So by measuring time more directly, we have a means for controlling program flow and measuring time and regulating rates that doesn't involve the delay statement. But just to get started, let's look at an example and walk through the details. So I have here a Tinkercad sketch. There's an Arduino in the, in the circuit, but we're not going to even use it because we're, or any, any hardware. We're just looking at the internals of the Arduino. And I'm using a couple more functions here and a couple more data types. Um, first is inside the loop, there's a, a reference to the function micros, and it returns a long integer, which we're going to store into this variable called now. Micros is a function that reads the physical hardware, both the a sort of like once every millisecond count as well as the underlying hardware count, and returns a value uh, with units of microseconds, which is the number of microseconds elapsed since either the, Ar the Arduino started or the last time that the value, the counter itself, physically rolled over some of its maximum. Um, in the second line, we uh, also reuse the function millis, which is short for milliseconds. And it is similar. It returns a value, which is the number of milliseconds elapsed since the start. It's also a long integer. Uh, it prints that out and prints a space. Then it prints out the current micros value and prints a space. And then the last thing it does here is it does a subtraction and prints the value, which is uh, basically the timestamp now subtracted from the previous time that the loop ran. And that will tell us the elapsed time for the loop function. And then the last thing it does is there's a global variable last time. And the last thing the loop function does is save the new timestamp back in that value. So when we run this, and I'm going to open the serial monitor to see it, we'll see a couple column of, columns of numbers come out. This is the case where we might see a distinctly different value on either your computer or on a physical Arduino as opposed to the Tinkercad simulation, just because the nature of timing in the simulation is much more dependent upon other factors, not the, there's no Arduino hardware. So the first column is showing us a millisecond count since I started the program. That's from the millis function. The second column is showing us a microsecond count from when I started the program. That's the micros. And the third column is showing us the elapsed interval. And the units are microseconds. So we see there roughly 2,000 microseconds or 2 milliseconds. So this simulated Arduino is ticking over at a rate of about 500 times per second running the loop function. This is to say, I mean, honestly, I think that's actually, this rate is largely driven on a physical Arduino by the serial port. On the simulated Arduino, I'm not quite sure what is the rate limiting step. It turns out on a physical Arduino, the serial print operation is sending bytes at the serial port, and actually sending data at the serial port ends up being much slower than any other calculation in this loop. And so the overall rate is actually limited by the print functions. Without the print functions, this can run very fast. It's quite possible to run a loop function on an Arduino that runs on the order of hundreds of thousands of times per second, or even more, just because uh, even though the underlying chip is not terribly fast, the amount of overhead in each of the operations is also quite low. It takes some time to get used to the relative timescales here, 
A microsecond is, from a human standpoint, an infinitesimally small time, and yet reasonably long on the scale of electronics. So part of working with physical systems is knowing kind of where to fall in these units. When we build physical hardware, of course, it's subject to physics rules and you know the physical behavior. And so very often the time constants of you know things happening in, in, in terms of macroscopic motion end up being tens and hundreds of milliseconds. But the Arduino is capable of measuring at much finer rates. So just to summarize, um, the Arduino has some clocks, a, a way of counting uh, units that are related to the hardware clock at precise levels down to the order of microseconds, and then a slower clock that measures milliseconds from that. And then with software, you can measure longer intervals. We can both measure intervals by recording timestamps, as well as sort of control the execution rate by governing when code is executed based upon clocks. And a kind of hint that in the future, we're going to try to back away from using delay in terms of more uh, specific calculations using the clock values as a way to regulate how fast things run.